It's my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Ali Abbas. Ali is a professor of industrial engineering at University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana, where he also directs the Decision Analysis Laboratory. He did his doctoral work at Stanford in the Department of Management Science and Engineering, where he focused on decision analysis under Ron Howard, and they have co-authored a forthcoming book called Foundations of Decision Analysis. Ali has received numerous grants and awards from the National Science Foundation, one of which, which is called AHUNA, is a website and social media area for decision skills. And I think that you should take a look at that because it's very much aligned with what we're doing in this course. When I had the opportunity to work with Ali in the context of a juvenile detention center in Illinois, I was very much impressed by how he took complex concepts in decision analysis and brought them into a vocabulary and into subjects that connected with the students there. With that in mind, I thought that he would be a great person to bring sound reasoning as a topic to you in this decision sales course. Let's hear what Ali has to say. Hi, I'm here to tell you about one of the most important elements of decision quality, and this is the logic or the sound reasoning. And this is very often forgotten. So let's take an example to see how you can think of all elements of decision quality, and if you don't get the logic right, you might still end up making a bad decision. So let's take this example. Suppose a company is choosing its new chief executive officer, the CEO. And so they send out and they get six applicants, six possible candidates for the CEO. Candidate A, B, C, D, E, and F. Now, F looks a bit strange, you might see. So the board is thinking now about how to choose which one of these candidates is going to be the CEO. And one of them comes up with an idea. He says, as we might all very naturally do and think, we're going to conduct a survey and then use a majority voting system. And this is something that many of us might think sounds reasonable. So they get 30 votes from the company. And here are the survey results. 10 people prefer candidate A to B to C to D to E to F. Another 10 prefer B to C to D to E to F to A. And the last group prefer C to D to E to F to A to B. There's one thing you might notice about this survey result is that everybody prefers C to D to E to F. You see that? In other words, if you ask everyone in this group, do you prefer C to D, they will say yes. And do you prefer E to F, they will say yes. Now, let's see how choosing a bad logic can make a bad decision. So, here are our respondents. Okay, here is everyone is preferring C to D to E to F. Now, do you want F to win? I can make it happen. Let's see how we do that. So, first we say, let's eliminate the candidates one by one using majority vote. So they choose between candidates D and E. Now, notice on the slides here, everyone prefers D to E. So if they did a majority vote between D and E, D will win. Now, candidate E has been eliminated. Okay, everyone prefers C to D. So let's make a majority vote between C and D. Everyone prefers C to D, so C will win. Now we've eliminated D and E. Well, we keep going. Notice here, 20 people prefer B to C, and 10 prefer C to B. So if we did a majority vote between B and C, guess who will win? Right, it's B. And so now C is eliminated. We're left with A, B, and F. We do it again. We ask, who do you prefer, A or B? Notice again that 20 people prefer A to B and only 10 prefer B to A. Therefore, 
A will win and candidate B will be eliminated. We're left with A and F. Now we ask, who do you prefer, A or F? Yeah. And 20 people prefer F to A and 10 prefer A to F, therefore F is elected. Isn't that interesting? Everybody preferred C to D to E to F, yet we were able to construct a logic by which F was elected. This example just shows the importance of getting the logic right, or even if we think about the other elements of decision quality, we could still make a bad decision.